that's the statistical story of the Memphis Showboats offense. But they had a grand opportunity when Cade intercepted Kelly in the early going of this first quarter and did not score from the 25 as they elected to go for the touchdown instead of the three. Now they'll go to work from near their 19. First down. Mike Kelly will go to the air early here to Moser, and Moser gets just past the marker and out of bounds around the 31 for a first down in front of Mike Mitchell. Yeah. Let's join Tim Brandt now in a very warm Liberty Bowl and talk with Will Coakley. Keith, I know Swanee cringes every time he sees a receiver get a lick like that, but, Will, that's a that's one whale of a hit, and it really seemed to fire the entire team up. Well, I'll tell you, it was third down about five, and we know we knew that they might be coming out and trying to hit that short man. That's exactly what they did. They tried to hit him real quick. And we're just over to, I was just over there to make the hit. So. All right, Will. Keith. Thank you, Tim. It's first down for the showboats at their 31. Houston's caught in the neutral zone. The flag thrown on it. Kelly with a free play here. Running now. And he has to pull it down and runs out of bounds to protect his body because when that flag went up, it looked like some of the receivers kind of gave up on the pattern. I think so. Also, it looked like, I don't know whether it was the right guard, Ken Smith, or right tackle, David Huffman, looked like they may have also flinched. And if the man's in the neutral zone, okay, they call it on the defense. Probably drawing the movement on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty, which brings a fret from Jack Party. No score here in the first quarter. Ball comes out to the 37. That's the 72nd Houston penalty of the season. So they've been flagged a lot. Trying to anticipate. Ball is handed off to Tim Spencer. And Spencer, who has labored all season with a very sore leg and ankle, Looked pretty strong that time as he's running up the middle of the field. There isn't much grass in the middle of the field here at the Liberty Bowl, and Spencer spinning around, picks up the first down. A lot of sand there so you can lose your traction. Tim Spencer told Pepper Rogers that he feels good, he wants to play more, and Tim Spencer's the kind of back heat who has to carry the ball 15 to 20 to 23 times a ball game to start feeling good. He gets stronger. A lot of running backs do that. Out of Ohio State. It's first down. The ball is just over the 45. As Mike Kelly again drops and throws underneath. Nope, didn't either. He went outside to Derek Crawford and Crawford out of Memphis State. Derek Crawford, perhaps in, in sheer foot speed, is as fast as anybody. Derek Crawford runs about a 4 3 4 4 in the 40 yard dash. Right here, he's got Will Lewis, number 24, who'll be playing underneath. And Will has his back turned towards the ball. Very good pass by Kelly. Throws it right by his head. He's looking in the backfield, and the ball's already gone. Then there was number 37 coming over, Tommy Myers, of free safety, to put him out of bounds and stop him from scoring a touchdown. And the showboats are first down at the Houston 39. Well, this time the right guard of the Memphis offense, Ken Smith, took a little jump before the snap, so they lose the five, and it'll take them back to the 44. Take a look here. He just got off a little bit early on the snap count. Leaning forward. Ken Smith, 275. The other guard on the left side is number 68, an old friend of mine, Tyrone McGriff. I promised everyone I wouldn't tell Tyrone got up to 325 pounds during the offseason, but he's down considerably okay, now. I think it's about 290. is caught inside the 15 by Van Heflin, the tight end. Penalty flag following the catch. First year ball player out of Vanderbilt. Same school that uh, Coleman, cornerback on defense, went to. That's a pretty good catch. They were all over him. Great catch. A very good pass by Mike Kelly. Gave him a chance to go up for it. Bill Parkinson, the referee. What was that call, Keith? I couldn't quite understand him, what he said. It's against uh, Heflin. We'll take another look at it, see if we can spot it. Kelly rolling out. 
You see, it gives him a little confidence. That's his first catch of the season. He goes up and really takes it. I can't see where the penalty is. I couldn't hear him. The echoes here in the stadium, and I didn't have his mic hot into our line, so I don't know what he said. Yeah, I'm wondering, kid, if he didn't inadvertently just point in the wrong direction. If it spiking the oh, ball. Spiking the ball. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Carried away with his first catch, and it cost him five. The ball comes back to about the 17 as Kelly steps up to throw, and is caught. And they call him in the grass, but fighting his way in is Pete Caton for his first tackle of the ball game. And Pete Caton was working against a very good one, Lewis Sharp, number 67. We just got him this year out of St. Louis. Pete Caton had a herniated disc and had it operated on. They removed it. Took a, quite a long time to recuperate. And, and, of course, you want to take your time with this. We're going back to play here. That's Van Heflin, number 88, in the spike. After he caught the pass, you're not going to see that called very often. No, it's also, uh, it's in the book, there's delay of game. The ball is now outside the 25 as Memphis is backing up. They have the ball inside the 15, but the penalty and the sack has put him back down the middle. It's Moser. And Moser is down to about the eight-yard line. Kelly, with some zip on the ball, took it right down the middle to Greg Moser between Bradley and Mitchell. Zip on the time, also, zip on the ball, rather, also a lot of time. We'll take a look at an isolation of Greg Moser. He's coming down the field, working against the zone. You saw him right there, looping in behind Luther Bradley. He's got Mike Mitchell over the top. Kelly finds him right in the middle. He knows there are lots of people around, so as soon as he caught that ball, he kept it in the stomach. He protected it so it wouldn't pop out. Measuring for the first down. Greg Moser is not the fastest receiver, Keith. He only runs about the 4-6, but he runs a good, quick 4-6. Just short. Kelly now, 5 out of 6 for 83 yards for the Showboats. He's hit 5 in a row, and they're about a foot short of a first and goal. The nose of the ball just touching the Houston 7-yard line. 7.35 to go in the first quarter. Now they've got Spencer in there at the deep spot. With uh, Harry Sidney lined up in front of him. Both tough runners. <laughs> Give it to Spencer, and he's got the first down as he slants it right and goes inside the five. It'll be first and goal for the Memphis Showboats. They're playing excellent football. Most of the players have told me that this was the best week of practice they've had all season long. Everybody very confident up, ready to play this football game. They're somewhat embarrassed by the last time they had played Houston when they really had their shorts handed to them in that ball game. 37 to 3. Ooh. Well, their big win of the season may have come against the Birmingham Stallions here a week ago Friday night. They popped them 38 to 24, and it wasn't really that close. Birmingham has the number one defense in the USFL. <laughs> Kelly rolls it left. Got a man in front of him. He'll keep it and score. Pulling guard Ken Smith, 275 pounder out of Miami, Ohio, is going to lead Kelly. Now, Walter Lewis is number 10, backing up Kelly. He's a man known for all the, the foot speed and running with the football, but Kelly is not afraid to take it. Did a real good job reading the block by Ken Smith. He took the man to the outside. He cut up inside, took a lick, got the touchdown. Allen Duncan for the extra point. It is good. Well, Memphis was down there knocking on the door early at the 25 and couldn't do anything with it, so they come back to their own 19 and then march it downfield, 81 yards for the touchdown. And at 6 minutes and 31 seconds to play in the first quarter, the showboats are out on top, 7 to nothing. And when you get out in front of the Houston Gamblers, that's a very, very important thing. The one thing you don't want to do is get behind against Houston.